and convicted. Percy Schmeiser was sued by Monsanto for patent infringements worth several million dollars. They had discovered patented seed on the Canadian farmer's land. Schmeiser, a staunch opponent of genetic engineering, claimed that the seed had been carried onto his field via pollen from neighboring fields. But his protests were in vain. And it destroys the property of others, whether it's an organic farmer or conventional farmer like myself. It is wrong, wrong, wrong. No one should have the rights by introducing something into the environment that destroys the property of others. Hier Lizenzen einzufordern, ähm, diesen Anspruch erhebt Monsanto, wenn ein Landwirt bewusst ähm, diese Technologie und das geistige Eigentum missachtet. Heartland USA. Here, the corporation decides for itself which farmer they will take to court. Farmers that buy supplies from Monsanto have to sign a contract that precisely defines the type of crop sown and the methods used, and which prohibits the farmer from using his own harvest again as seed the next season. In addition, the farmer commits to purchasing new seed each year at a high price and must allow inspectors onto his land at any time. Jeffrey Smith, publicist and environmental activist, is collecting material in an effort to fight against the corporation's monopoly politics. He pays a visit to Dean Chambers in Iowa. The farmer reports that many of his colleagues would rather buy the expensive Monsanto technology than try to defend themselves. The cultivation of conventional plants that have not been genetically engineered has become practically impossible, he reports. You know, if I'm surrounded by, by, by corn and it's genetically modified, I could lose my crop to, to, uh, to, because the crop's genetically contaminated. And, and, again, and guess what? Then I can get sued by Monsanto for, for, for a breach of contract of uh, you know, trying to sell their seed. It's, it's insane. Critics speak of deliberate contamination. The fact is, a dramatic mixing is already taking place. And all the while, the risks of the new genetic technology for the environment and the consumer are still anything but clear. They said PCBs were safe. They weren't. They said Agent Orange was safe. It wasn't. And they're saying now that genetic engineering is safe. And it's not. Insecticides are a thing of the past. Monsanto is reinventing itself thanks to biotechnology. The official credo is food, health, hope. Headquarters has some ambitious goals. Well, Monsanto came, I think, to Arthur Anderson, and this is uh, to look at how they want to uh, position themselves. And they asked him, where do you want to be, Monsanto, in, I think, 20 or 30 years? And the answer was, we want to control the global food supply. Bill Witherspoon, a former manager from the genetic engineering industry, witnessed the company's ambitious master plan, as presented by a management consultant at a conference in Miami. The consultant believed that Monsanto would, through controlling intellectual property, patents, right, worldwide control, not have to worry about market share because there would be no one else to compete against them. So part of the discussion was how to remove competition because that's the only way that you're going to gain the kind of control that's necessary to dominate something as fundamental as the food chain. It wasn't about getting market share. It was about owning the whole thing. Farmers in Germany still have no idea how far the corporation is going to take its patent actions. Nonetheless, Christoph Zimmer is uneasy. The first laboratory results are in, and they are anything but encouraging. He wants to conduct further tests on the farm of Manfred Horlacher, who breeds an especially old race of pig. 
Und wenn man beim Feder, da haben wir auch schon untersucht, dann haben wir festgestellt, dass bis zu 75 Prozent von den Schweinen diese Gene enthalten haben, auf die man dann das Patent erhebt. Not so easy obtaining a hair sample. As if the clever Zhao wants to keep the genetic secret behind her ample proportions to herself, she can't be lured out of her corner. Some soy meal comes to the rescue. At the Horlacher farm, the breeders are also finding Monsanto's pig patent hard to stomach. I think that this is only one reason for um, uh, an, um diese Landwirte abhängig zu machen von dem Konzern, wie es ja dann auch in dem Bereich Getreide oder Mais ja schon passiert, dass die Leute das Saatgut ausschließlich von Monsanto beziehen müssen, das Spritzmittel, das Düngemittel und so weiter und in eine totale Abhängigkeit kommen. Wenn die Pro äh, Sau oder Ferkel, wo ein Stall verlässt, äh, Gebühren kassieren können, ist das eigentlich eine Einnahmequelle, wo kein Ende findet. Ne? Entweder muss der Landwirt äh, aufhören oder, oder wenn er nicht aufhören will, dann muss er diese Gebühren bezahlen. In the United States and other countries, there are increasingly frequent reports of problems with genetic engineering. Harvests are failing, pests are returning, and allergies are multiplying. Monsanto has worked a new clause into its more recent contracts that forbids farmers from suing the company if genetically engineered seed should fail. In some American states, farmers who feed their pigs exclusively with genetically modified corn or soy have noticed a mysterious drop in their stock's fertility. Environmental activist Jeffrey Smith suspects that there is a connection between Monsanto's attempt to make a large-scale entry into the pig breeding business and the alleged problems with genetically modified feed. Hi, Jeffrey. Yeah, so I just got word from this person that knows someone that's raising heritage pigs in New York that they also had trouble giving birth when being fed certain varieties of genetically modified corn. And there's these people in Harlan, Iowa, that talk about their pigs as a result and not getting pregnant as a result of eating genetically modified corn. So we've got a rather um, sophisticated puzzle here we have to figure out. So. Obviously, I'm going to call them and uh, I'll visit them in, in Iowa. That's nearby. Jeffrey Smith wants to get an impression of the situation at the farm of Leland Kaufman, who recently had to give up breeding pigs. He now purchases his livestock from a large breeder. So, cats cost a hundred bucks a we went on for years, couldn't figure out what our conception rate problem was. We worked with a veterinary, spent thousand dollars here, thousand dollars there. Thought nobody can figure out what was going on, and we just finally give up. For a few years, we were planting 100 percent BT corn, and you know we didn't put two and two together till you start comparing the hog records when we were having conception rate problems, and go back on the tickets when we bought seed corn. What years we bought 100 percent BT corn? and then it all kind of coincided, fell into spot. We can't prove nothing, but it just very coincidental. I mean, we when we quit, we were down to 30% conception rate. It was thousands of dollars. I mean, till you sat down and really put feed costs to everything. I never did do that because it never come to a lawsuit where it isn't worth the time and effort. We've lost enough money with the conception rate. We don't need to follow up and spend more money trying to figure out what we lost. We lost thousands, there's no doubt. Jeffrey Smith wants to know what the farmer believes is the impact of the whole thing on people, on consumers. Nobody knows, you know, or they're not telling us, or they don't want to tell us. The big companies probably don't want to tell us, so now, who's the guinea pig now? <laughs> 